Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy New Year. Amen. You know now in the youth church we it is a happy new year because it's, it's our very first service. Look at somebody and congratulate them and welcome them in the service. I know there is corona, but you don't get corona by looking at somebody. Look at them, welcome them in the service. Welcome them in the house of the Lord. Yeah, it is good to see you all. And then we may have our seats. And may the Lord bless you for coming. Praise Him, thank you. May the Lord bless you. Please help me appreciate these wonderful people. Appreciate Brian. <laughs> and there is a, a special group of people that we always forget to appreciate the technicians. <laughs> and, and today you have done it exceptionally well. <laughs> I, and also I saw Kemaita there helping. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you for the good sound. May the Lord bless you. I want to thank God for all of you. You know, uh, I believe it is such a privilege to, to be pastoring and to be ministering to a, a group of great people like you. Oh, maybe there is somebody who is wondering. As he is talking of greatness, what is great about me? You see, we, we are not great by the definition of our credentials. That is where you went to school, who you've met in life. But we are great because of what the word of God says about us. Tell me, a career of God. Hey, I am a presence carrier. I am a God carrier. Hey, there's a guy you used to school with. He used to be called um, Kefas Kehanya in high school. And one time we had a CEO meeting and he came and told us, hey, today I had the privilege of meeting the chairman of BOG. The chairman of BOG. Nowadays it is the chairman of BOM. He was a very famous guy even in Nairobi. At some point, I think he was the chairman of the Nairobi Stock Exchange, something like that. A great man. But then he told us something that I've never forgotten to this day. But after that, I met the creator of heaven and earth in prayer. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we celebrate greatness in terms of what somebody has achieved in life. A political office academic credentials but we fail to celebrate greatness that this is a man and a woman who have met Christ this is a man and a woman who connects with the, with the heaven this is a man who pulls the heavens down PhD pulling heavens down hallelujah praise the Lord so, and I know this year God will be doing great things in your life. I hear people, and actually even myself at some point I confessed that 2020 was a very difficult year. Until I sat in my house and watching news, I met people who were called COVID billionaires. <laughs> and genuine COVID millionaires, people who saw opportunities. Most of the times, we get to see the new year. Of course, we sit down and write resolutions. We make those prophetic declarations. We pray and fast. Some of us, we forget to pray and fast. We we go and, you know, walk around telling people what we want to achieve with the year. 
And there is nothing wrong with that. The problem is that it has been discovered that by the end of the first month of the year, most people have actually forget, uh, forgotten their 2021 or the New Year's resolutions. By the end of January, most people will have forgotten what they want to achieve in the year. A good number of people will have even forgotten why they need to achieve what they decided they wanted to achieve. And equally, a good number will have lost steam to pursue what they want to achieve in the new year. So it doesn't actually end up with the resolutions. Resolutions alone are not enough. Dreams alone, they are not enough. You must decide to wake up and pursue the dreams. I don't want to tell you to look back and see where you wrote your 2020 resolutions. Of course you will blame COVID. You have a very good reason. Oh pastor, you know what happened. But you need to realize in 2020, if statistics be true, you almost took all the meals. Hallelujah. All the meals, you didn't miss any. <laughs> the issue is not the resolution that you want to write down. It is not the dreams that we are talking about, that we are speaking about. The issue is, are we willing to push and to pursue until it is done? And if in 2021 we will achieve those resolutions that you wrote, that you are going to write, that you are writing even right now, in your mind then it is fair enough to discover how what will it take for me to achieve them and that's what I'll be sharing with us throughout this month the remaining Sundays of this month I'll be sharing with us about it and I know that God will help you and he will help me to achieve what he wants us to achieve in Jesus' mighty name. There is a man who walked around telling people, I have a dream. I want to change the world. Hallelujah. How many people want to change the world? How many people want to leave a mark? And uh, as time went by, he realized, hey, the world is too big. He said, I want to change Africa. Africa shall be changed through me. After some time, he realized, hey, Africa is too big. Now we are talking of 53 states, 53 nations. He scaled it down and said, I must change Kenya. Kenya shall be changed. He realized that he had 47 counties. Hey, it's not very easy. He said, Kiambu County shall be changed. And lastly, he narrowed it down by saying, I must be changed. Because he realized <laughs> it's only a changed soul that can change another soul. And how true we want to talk of greatness. We want to talk of achieving. But we remain the same. You want to pray just like you prayed last year. You want to skip service just like you skipped last year. Repeat absent. But still you want to achieve. 
New Year's resolutions. It won't happen. It can't happen. If there's going to be change, it must start with you. And somebody says, change starts with me. Hallelujah. Keys to an infective life in 2021. And number one key, it is prayer. It is prayer. I want us to look at First Kings chapter 3. First Kings chapter 3, verse 4 and, f- and 5. First Kings chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. Okay, you can read it with me. It is on the screen. The king went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices for that was the most important high place. And Solomon offered a thousand pound offerings. Verse 5. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night and in a dream. And God said, Ask, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7. Matthew 7, 7. And read it with me. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you verse 8 verse 8 for everyone who asks receives he who seeks finds and to him who knocks the door will be opened to him let's pray father we thank you for the reading of your word we ask in the name of jesus may this word have effect in our lives it may shape our attitude towards prayer and towards you towards life that we may learn that every time we ask we are not wasting time but we are indeed lord exercising our authority as children of god thank you for giving us this privilege to connect to you through prayer in jesus name we pray We can never emphasize the importance of prayer in our lives and especially in the new year. Somehow the life of a believer the life of a believer tends to be affected a lot by the quality of their prayers. I want to repeat again. Your life as a believer tends to be affected a lot by the quality of the prayers that you make. It is Jesus who taught his disciples the garden of Gethsemane and he was telling them, pray so that you don't fall into temptations. It is Jesus who taught us to pray the Lord's prayer. Give us today our daily bread lead us not into temptation let your will be done it is jesus who taught us that about this uh, these two friends one of them received a visitor in the night and he didn't have enough food in fact he didn't have food And so he went to his neighbor, to his friend, to ask for food so that he could serve his his visitor. And the friend, being in bed, spoke up and said, Hey, I am in bed. And my children too. I can't wake up. So this man, he is saying he can't wake up, yet he is talking. So already awake. And so Jesus taught us a principle there. So long as the guy will keep on knocking, he will be given the bread. Because the man did not say there is no bread. He said, I am asleep. 
Bana asifiwe. Your life as a believer tends to be affected a lot by the quality of the prayers that you make. Jesus would ask the disciples. He was in his last hours of his life. He was spending the last moments of his life with the disciples. But it's like they were not getting it. They were falling asleep. He was asking them. You couldn't even pray for one hour. Hallelujah. 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 How is your prayer life? Because I'm telling you the truth. People of God. If 2021 will have significance. Will have a change. If in 2021 you are going to see results. Then there is something that must change about your life. And the number thing to change must be your attitude towards prayer. It is your prayer life. Your prayer life as a believer must change. In fact, our prayer lives and the ministry must change. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. And you know very well what prayer can do. If uh, I could ask you to mention examples of answered prayers. Some of us, you, you would actually just shoot them straight. You remember Hezekiah. You remember Jehoshaphat. You remember Hannah. Of course, you can't forget Hannah. Hannah Keroge. <laughs> Hannah is very excited. <laughs> You remember Moses? You do tell God, if you don't go with us, we are not leaving this place. If you are not going with us in 2021, Lord, we are not making it. We are not leaving here. We can't manage. You remember Isaac got married to a beautiful wife. Beautiful Rebecca. The process was right. The engagement was right. The dowry was right. Only to discover Kulembele, the girl was discovered that Rebecca was barren. And I love what the Bible says. That Isaac entreated entreated it's more or less like pleading your case before the Lord. Stating your case. There's no way you would give me a good wife. Give me a beautiful girl. I followed the light procedure and here we are. She is barren. God, you must do something. And the Bible says in Genesis 25 and verse 21. And God answered Isaac and Rebekah conceived. Hallelujah. You have those examples with you. Of course you have your own examples about the things that you prayed for and you know very well it is God who intervened. It is God who came through for you. You know very well if there is anything like that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know answered prayers they act like a catalyst to your faith. They make you want to believe God all the more, even for greater things. So God answers prayers. The question is, are you praying? 
What are you believing God for? What are you seeking God for? What are you trusting God for? The other day we were making prayers at home. And we have a family journal, prayer journal. And uh, I began with my son Asaf. I asked him, Asaf, unataka tu, tu, tu kuombe nini? Tuambie mungu nini? <laughs> and Asaf being the child and being the boy that he is, very excited, akasema, donut. And you know I couldn't assume that. <laughs> he knows God can give him a donut. You are laughing. And maybe some of the things that you've been praying for, they are like a, a donut. One time the servant of God, Jesse Duplantis, successful in ministry, I, I believe it's him. He was praying and he was crying to God. He wanted 50,000 US dollars. He was crying to God and telling God, you must give me 50,000 US dollars. And God rebuked him. And God told him, I've just given Kevin Hagen, Kenneth Copeland, 50 million US dollars and you are here crying. Now you see what we are, to we are talking about. A donut. Mumoja anaitisha 50 million US dollars. Na anambiwa, it is done. It is answered. Go in peace. Na muingine anadhia. Nipatie. Nipatie 50,000. But because God is faithful, he honors your faith. And throughout the scriptures, the people that Jesus healed, the miracles that he performed on people, he would tell them, your faith has done what has made you well. Let it be done according to your faith. All of them were asking. They were asking that Jesus could intervene in their situation. Blighted Patimaeus. He was stating his case before the Lord. And Jesus heard him. And he commanded, let him be brought. And when Bartimaeus was brought, he did not get mixed up. Jesus asked him, now look at this. So that you may know the importance of prayer. Why would Jesus ask a blind man, what do you want? Why? Why do Jesus ask a blind man, what do you want? What I've made from this experience of Jesus and Bartimaeus is that maybe he also wanted a clarification whether it was the miracle of sight or the miracle or the miracle of provision, food. Because all of them are needs. We have blind people on our streets today. Have you ever found a blind person on the streets asking you, hey, who is there? Pray for me. What do they ask for? What do they ask for? They ask for arms. They ask for money. And Jesus spoke in Matthew 7, 7 and says, Ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. For he who asks, receives. He who knocks at six finds. And he who knocks. And in fact, that name ask. It's an acronym of those three. Ask, seek, knock. And you can make it your acronym in 2021. I'll be 
asking. That is, I will be asking from God. I will be seeking from God. I will be knocking until the doors are opened. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The six things that prayer can do, I will mention two. I will mention two because of time. Number one, prayer brings fruitfulness. Prayer brings fruitfulness. Have you been unfruitful in 2020? In 2021, you can decide, you can make up your mind that I will be fruitful. Prayer brings fruitfulness where there is barrenness. In Genesis 25, 21, where we've read, Isaac prayed to God concerning the situation of his wife, Rebekah, and she conceived. It's on the screen. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his plea and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. In Luke 1.13, in Luke 1.13, Luke 1.13, Luke 1.13, Martin, quickly, Luke 1.13, the Bible says, But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, your prayer has been Hard, your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. For this man of God by the name Zachariah, it was even a full package, a full miracle. At a jina, yeyo baraka unapewa. Siku conceived to unabu at a jina, uyu mdoro damuita flat. John. Prayer works. Praise the Lord. You see, Zechariah was a servant of God. Isaac was the son of Abraham, the friend of God. You are a, a child of God. But I'm telling you, until Eliana asked me about some of the things that she may want from me, I may not give them out. And so in 2021, you will ask and ask. You will seek, you will knock until everything that has been barren in your life gives way. In Jesus' name. You can't afford to be the same. Last year, uliomba dakika mbili. Two minutes. Umeombea dunia yote na familia yenu masomo umeombea no you can't remain there you can't remain barren you can't remain with a barren prayer life you must get out of that wilderness of prayerlessness in Jesus name ambia mtu tunakuhamisha katika jina la Yesu And of course, you must be willing to take those baby steps. Of course, you may not just rise up and pray for one hour, but you must embrace the attitude of change so that you may begin somewhere so that you may get somewhere else, a better place. When the angel appeared to Zechariah, he came with a report. Your prayers have been answered. So if he had not been praying, there was nothing that could be answered. Are you praying? Are you asking? Are you knocking? Because when the angel appears, he'll be bringing you a reply. Even when he appeared, when Daniel was praying, he came with an explanation. It is indeed true that when you set your face to seek God, I was sent with a reply. I think it was a fulfillment of what the Bible says. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The question is, are you asking? 
Do you even have an attitude to ask? And Pastor Kevin will lead us in knowing and understanding how we are going to pray as the youth ministry so that we may begin strong in this year. And number two, number two thing what prayer can do, prayer brings restoration. Prayer brings restoration. Prayer brings restoration. First Kings 17, 17. Read it with me. To go after this, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. His illness became very severe until no breath remained in him. Give me New King James. Thank you for HCSB. He gave us New King James. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick. And his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. I think it is NIV that says that he died. Uh, verse 18. Verse 18. So she said to Elijah, What have I, have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? Verse 19. And he said to her, give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bed. Verse 20. And he cried out to the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodge by killing her son? Verse 21. And he stretched himself out on the child three times and the cry... And he cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. In verse 22, Then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came back to him, and he revived. And he revived. I'm waiting for your amen. And your amen is so lame. When I see that's why you say amen, especially if you lost an opportunity in 2020. Because there's going to be restoration. Hallelujah. This is the woman, the man, the last meal before she could die with her son, as she put it in the Bible. She obeyed the voice of the prophet. Don't know how many of us would dare do that. The last meal. Maduka hakuna chakula. In any case, that hauna pesa. Rav pasta apitie. That's where you bind. Bwana. Usikubali aitishe chochote. But Elijah made a demand. Make me a piece of cake. I can be a man of God. We are not mukonogam. But I want to state the facts here. I'm making the last meal for my son. Tafadhali, man of God, bear with me. But Elijah being Elijah <laughs> told the lady, me first. And then the rest, for this is the voice of the Lord that he knew by it. I have always believed that the lady had never met Elijah. Maybe she had heard about Elijah, the man who had shut the heavens so that there was no rain. Of course, if you do that, the whole world will know you. We have Google. We have YouTube. We would even have the video as you make that declaration. So the lady, maybe she had known. But finding the car.
courage to give, to serve the last meal to a stranger. Yet your son is there watching you. Now that's what we call radical faith. And then the son died. So the lady was asking Elijah, surely, kwa ni umekuja kukumbusha mungu, thambi zangu? Hini after kukula mkate yangu halafu mtoto wangu wanakufa. Just like that. And the man of God, feeling that pain, prayed to God, told God, revive this boy. And it was done. It was done. Prayer brings restoration. I'm telling you people of God, there are things that you may have lost last year. There are things that you actually lost last year. But you won't achieve by wishing that you would achieve them. You would achieve them through prayer. If you will ask of God, if you will seek from God, if you will keep on knocking, the word of God is telling us that there is going to be restoration. Hallelujah. 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 It is going to happen if you choose to remain in the place of prayer. Praise be to Jesus. Keys to an effective life in 2021. We must be people who stay in the place of prayer. If you are doing 10 minutes, you can do 20. If you are doing 20, you can do 40. If you are doing one hour, you can now believe God for two hours of prayer. It's a young man. It's a young lady. You can't afford to be prayerless. In 2021, you're securing your own future. You are speaking into your future family. You are believing God for that breakthrough that you want to see in your life. You can't afford to be lazy in this discipline. You must embrace prayer as a discipline. You must embrace prayer as a pathway to achieving God's will for your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us bow down for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you today. You are speaking to us even through your word. That Lord, indeed, you do answer prayers. You answered Isaac. You answered Zechariah. You answered Hezekiah. You answered Jesus. You answered even the apostles. We have evidences in your word of how you answered prayers. And Lord, today we are encouraged because it is you, Lord, who have invited us even to state our case before you, to ask, to seek, and to knock. And you say, if we ask, it shall be given unto us. If we seek, we shall find. If we knock, the door will be opened. Your word says that we have not because we ask not. Yet even when we ask, we ask amiss. We ask outside your will. And Lord, we pray today that you may help us to ask right, to pray right, O oh God. That Lord, through receiving our answers, your name will be glorified. I pray for my brothers and my sisters as we embark on a season of prayer. Lord, in this month, I pray for your grace, the enabling power of the Holy Spirit, that we may remain in the place of prayer, that we may ask according to the will of God, that, Lord, we may ask faithfully, dear Lord. Thank you because you are good. Thank you because you are faithful. Thank you because you love us, O oh God. Receive all the praise and receive all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we believe. Amen and amen. Help me appreciate the Lord.